Well, I'm out at the range today with the 223 Remington, and I recently tried out some Trail Boss loads in 22-250, so I got kind of intrigued by the whole concept. So I decided I'd try a few in 223. So these have charges of six and a half up to eight and a half grains of Trail Boss, 55 grain full metal jacket bow tail bullet and I'm going to be trying those out of the 700 5R at 100 yards over the chronograph and we'll see how we can do. These uh, charges were arrived at using the advice you get on the Hogden website for trail boss loads for bottlenecked rifle cases so if you're curious to see how to do that that info is on the Hogden website. Anyway let's see how these work. Here's the chronograph results with 6.5 grains of trail boss. By the way, we're using a CCI 450 primer, no crimp, and there's our overall length. These were in Winchester cases. I only caught three of the five shots on the chronograph, had some technical difficulties. Anyway, your high, average, extreme spread 1.58, standard deviation of basically nothing, three shots registered 1650, 1651, and 1651. Well, hard to beat those numbers. Too bad I didn't get the first two that I fired, but let's go have a look at the target. All right, there's our first group with six and a half grains of trail boss. Point of aim was up there, as to be expected, they are dropping because they're quite slow. Chronograph results with seven grains of trail boss. There's our low, 1733, high, 1776, average, 1749, extreme spread of 44, standard deviation of 16, and the individual five shots. Next group with seven grains of trail boss. Point of aim has uh, remained the same, but the group has moved up on the target a bit due to the slightly higher velocity. A little better group size that time. Chronograph results with seven and a half grains of trail boss. There's our low, 1802, high 1813, average 1807, extreme spread of 10.8, standard deviation 4.6, and the individual five shots. I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, it's about minus five degrees Celsius today. And the chronograph is approximately eight feet in front of the muzzle. This group is with seven and a half grains of Trail Boss. 
Point of aim, once again, is the center of that diamond. And of course, the rounds are landing low. Chronograph results with eight grains of trail boss. There's our low, 1871, high, 1898, average, 1882, extreme spread of 27.6, standard, de standard deviation, 10.8, and the individual five shots. Here's a group with uh, eight grains of trail boss. Point of aim, of course, is on the diamond, the center of the diamond. And the group, of course, is a little low, but it's moving up compared to the earlier groups. Here's our last uh, grouping or set for the day. This is with eight and a half grains of trail boss. There's our low, 1908. High, 1946. Average, 1931. Extreme spread, 37. Standard deviation, 15.3. And the individual five shots. Here's our final group of the day with Trail Boss. This is eight and a half grains. Point of impact is starting to come up closer to the point of aim due to the higher velocity. Anyway, I think I'll measure those groups up when I get home rather than do it out here in the cold. It's the next day. I'm home from the range and I'm inside where I can do some measuring in warmth. So. We've done that and we've got some numbers to show you. So first off is that group with six and a half grains of Trail Boss. This was out of a cold clean barrel and I think that uh, explains the one shot which is low, most likely the shot from the cold barrel. The group size for all five uh, rounds, 2.47 inches. If we kind of discount that one because it's the uh, cold bore shot, we get 1.9 inches for the other four, which uh, is not great. But then again, this is a bulk bullet, a Cam Pro one, uh, M193 style bullet, 55 grain, full metal jacket, boat tail. So certainly not a match or target bullet, kind of a, a bulk blasting type of bullet. Anyway, this is at 100 yards. Our next group was with seven grains of Trail Boss. Uh, an improvement there, 1.29 inches. The uh, point of aim from the previous shooting I had done, the last time I had that rifle out, I believe it was zeroed for the center here with 55 grain flat base bullets. So obviously some drop. Moving over to, uh, this is seven and a half grains. Our group opened up a little bit. We've got uh, four in a reasonable cluster there and then one outside opens it up to 1.7. We'll move on to the eight grain charge and that gave us 1.41 inches. Once again our hold point was up here and we have moved up a little touch. That's not uh, too terrible. I think that would be improved upon with a better bullet of course. And our last volley of the day was fired with this eight and a half grain charge and it gave us 1.55 inches. So overall, um, you know, not obviously not spectacular results, but 
we're not exactly using spectacular quality bullets here. So I think these could be improved upon with the uh, substitution of perhaps a 55 grain flat base hunting type bullet like a, a VMAX Hornady or a Nosler Barmageddon, something like that. I may try that out in the future to see how those do. Um, you may wonder, why would you bother with such a load? Well, a lot of times I like to try things at this stage in my reloading career just to see how they work because I'm curious. This is uh, certainly an economical way to shoot 223, even if you shoot the uh, sort of the top level charge there of eight and a half grains. That compares quite favorably with most 223 loads, which use, you know, 20 to 25 grains of powder. So you're going to get uh, a little more mileage for your, uh, your uh, given mass of powder. But I think more interestingly is that these are quite a bit quieter than a standard 223 load. They sound roughly like a 22 Magnum, which is kind of what you're, you're almost replicating a 22 Magnum when you load these. You have a basically a reloadable 22 Magnum. And as uh, you may know, if you buy a 22 Magnum, it has gotten to be pretty expensive stuff. So there is the economy aspect of that. These would also be good for doing less damage to, you know, pelt type critters. Maybe you don't want to blow a big hole in the pelt. You're shooting perhaps foxes. You can reduce the velocity and reduce the damage to the critter. So you have a better pelt and you're done. They might also be kind of handy for shooting in places where noise might be more of a concern because they are quieter. You're not going to get uh, quite as much disruption to bug your, you know, your neighbors or whatever. Um, and finally, if you're going to train or teach somebody new to shooting, this might be a good load to try, something like this. Let them shoot a, a bigger, heavier gun, yet uh, one that's got less noise and virtually no recoil whatsoever to speak of. So anyway, kind of interesting to mess with. I may go try these again with a better quality bullet and see how those work out. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and if you enjoy this kind of content, might want to hit the old uh, like button, leave a comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we'll see you in the next one.